As you can probably guess, I've been in the model railroading hobby for many years now, and as such, I have accumulated a interesting collection of locomotives. So, upon the request of some, today I shall go through the entire collection of HO scale locomotives that I have. But first, a little backstory. So, one of the reasons why I got into railroading in the first place is because of my older brother, and the layout that you've seen in a lot of my videos was actually built by him. But over the years, he kind of lost interest in model railroading, so I basically just kind of inherited his layout and all of the locomotives and cars on it. So, some of the engines in this video are actually technically my brother's, and I will specify which ones. That also means that um, since some of these engines belong to my older brother, that was he owned them during the time that I was a little kid who didn't understand the delicacy of models, which led to some incidents. I repent of my sins. So um, that explains why some of the engines are in the condition that they're in. But anyway, with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's actually begin with the collection, starting with the steam engines in order of when we got them. My brother's first and only steam engine was this nice Norfolk and Western 611 by Bachman Spectrum, but that was his only steam engine. My first steam engine was a Bachman 060 uh, Dixie line from the Chattanooga train set, which was a gift to me from my neighbors. Thank you, neighbors. And then we get to a rather interesting engine, what was originally a Bachman 282 from the 80s, um, is now basically an 082 tank engine. I got this at a train store many years ago for only like $10, and it was missing the front truck and the tender, so that's why you see it in the state it's in today. And then next to it, another interesting specimen, the Hornby Duck the Great Western Engine, my first ever Hornby item. And for a long time, these four steam engines were the only engines we had until the collection was doubled in 2022, starting with two more Hornby engines, the Battle of Britain Royal Observer Corps and the famous Hogwarts Express, aka Olton Hall. So those were my two other Hornby steam engines that might need a bit of a dust a dusting and then i have two more steam engines both of which are union pacific northerns one by bachman number 809 and one by ahm number 836 and for now that is my small but very diverse fleet of steam engines and now on to the diesels I'll start this diesel fleet off with the engines that belonged to my brother originally, beginning with the Athern BNSF AC44 in the Heritage 2, and a similar Athern AC44 in Heritage 3 paint. And then we get to this Santa Fe GP38-2, which I think is also made by Athern. Don't ask what happened. Just don't ask. Anyway, then we get to the Cato Union Pacific AC4400, the Athern CSX-9, and finally, the Athern Genesis BNSF SD70 ACE. So those were all of the diesel engines that originally belonged to my brother, and now on to all of the diesel engines that uh, were owned, are owned by me. It all started with this lifelike Santa Fe F unit, which came in another train set, which was another gift from my neighbors. Then I got this Athern Burlington Northern F7, a what I think is might be River Rossi, maybe Burlington Northern F45, I think Bachman Burlington Northern GP38, maybe, and then a River Rossi Amtrak E9, E8, E9, one of those. Two Athern Amtrak P42s, one is a powered, the other is a dummy unit, a model power Santa Fe Alco C628, a Bachman Milwaukee Road U30C, 
a Bachmann BNSF GP40, which came in the Rail Chief ready to run set. A Bachmann uh, Norfolk, Norfolk Southern 8105, the Interstate Heritage Unit. My first and only MTHHO item, the Santa Fe Dash 9, which I weathered a bit. A Cato Amtrak P42. The Scale Trains Rivet Counter BNSF ET44. A Cato Union Pacific AC4400. The poster boy of my YouTube channel, another Cato AC44 in the BNSF Heritage 2. A Walther's BNSF ES44. Another Walther's ES44 in the Kansas City Southern Delivery. And the most recent addition to the collection, yet another Walther's ES44 in the CSX paint job. So, that is pretty much all of me and my brother's locomotive collection in HO scale. I'm not going to get into rolling stock because that would take way too long. So, as you can tell, there's been a bit of a evolution in the collection. Uh, definitely some change in, I guess, trends, change in interests in what I wanted to model. But I, uh, the hard thing about model railroading is that it's just so hard for me to s decide on, like, what I want to model. Because there are so many different time periods and locations that are all so interesting to me. Which is also why I have such a diverse fleet of trains in the first place. Because there's just so many different things I want to model. No joke, it's like, one day I want to model Carney in the 2020s, the next it's LNER's East Coast Mainline in the 1950s. It's just, <laughs> I mean, it's fun to have that all these different scenes, but it can be hard to decide, like, make a definitive decision on what I want to do. So, yeah, it is fun to have such a diverse fleet of locomotives, and I do still have some ideas of uh, what engines I would like to get from here, but I lately I've been trying to kind of pace myself with buying locomotives for several reasons. First off, like I said, it's, I, it's really hard to decide, and the more locomotives I get, the harder it is to find, like, certain situations to run them in. I gotta get real creative, think of some loopholes, uh, to just make sure that I can, I'm able to include everything, because I just, I want to, I want to have, I want to kind of include everything in my layout, which also makes it so that because I want to include, like, a lot of my different diesel engines, I got to think of some real creative and colorful lash-ups. One big thing that I try to do is I try to make what look to be, like, those really long mega trains. I try to do that a lot, partly because I get to include a lot of engines in those trains, and also just because I know a lot of people don't like those longer trains, but personally, I just think they're cool. It's okay if you don't like them, but in my opinion, I, I just like them. I just think they're cool, especially on a model train layout. But um, anyway, yeah, it's just hard to kind of find a, find a spot for everything on a layout. I feel bad when I'm not able to include something. Uh, but yeah, it's just, I'm trying to, I'm also just trying to pace myself with buying new engines because... I guess I just don't want to get too materialistic, I suppose. I don't want to uh, become, like, too deeply focused on my trains, especially as I get older and I got to have my money going to other places, like, you know, college. Uh, so that's fun. And um, But, yeah, I probably shouldn't worry about that too much right now, but... Yeah, that's the locomotive collection as of the present moment, April 2023, and uh, yeah, it's definitely been an interesting collection. As I said, it's had its, it's had its changes, it's had its evolution. Uh, you can probably tell my bias, um, but 
yeah, it's been an interesting collection, and I think I still, I'll still plan to, I got a lot planned for model train stuff in the future, um, but yeah, it's, it's been fun, and I think that, I think that, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to say, I've run out of stuff to say, but, uh, yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed seeing this collection, um, it's just kind of, interesting and yeah i've officially run out of things to say thank you for watching uh goodbye thanks for watching my model train stuff